That's the bounce we were looking for. It came. Let's see if it holds now. It's going to be a dead cat bounce or we just see some continuation. We're going to dive into the charts and take a look at all your favorite names, tech stocks and EV stocks mainly. So before we dive into the charts and see if we have continuation with this rally, I can see 60% of you are not subscribed. So you're definitely going to want to subscribe if you're looking to build your wealth in the stock market with options trading, day trading, swing trading. My goal is to help you achieve financial freedom in the stock market so that way you don't have to worry about money in the future. Hit that thumbs up button and let's dive into the charts now. You saw yesterday in after hours, the SPY climbed from about 453 upwards to 459. Pre-market was holding around 459 and then sold off near the open. Didn't go very far, got to a low of about 456s and then boom, climbed up and finished the day at 463, up 1.78%. So that was the balance we were looking for on the one hour chart. RSI is coming up, stochastic is coming up in the flat line. Looks like we could see continuation for this buy, which is great news for a lot of the tech stocks and EV stocks. NASDAQ also had a big day, 2.2% up. So let's look at Tesla stock now. You'll see on the one hour chart that we did get that dump. We were up pre-market around 9.15. I actually bought 100 shares pre-market at 9.15. Then we saw a huge dump on the open, going to a low of 8.80. That is now another new low. We made it a lower low and then we bounced back up and we finished the day at 938. This looks like awesome news and it is great. But if you still look at the trend on the one hour chart, we are making lower lows and lower highs. We still need a break of a thousand to be confident that we broke out of this downtrend. Because if you see back on the in the history, of this one hour chart. We hit a high in the 1200s, we break lower. We hit a high 1170, we break lower. We hit a high of 1160, we break lower. We hit a high of 1070, we break lower. A high of 1015, break lower, come up. And we just hit 1006, break lower. High of 960s, break lower. Today, high of 938. However, if we take a look at the daily chart for Tesla stock, I actually drew this cup and handle formation. The cup and handle is a continuation pattern. And what we see is a massive cup here dating back from the beginning of the year and the handle coming down. And we're going to break out of this descending trend here up to the upside. And there's a gap at $1,200 per share. I could show you that in a moment. 91% of all gaps get filled. We know 1200 will eventually be hit. What's likely is we continue to trade down in this channel and then eventually break out at some point in January, more like near the end of January around earnings and really get the push up to fill the gap at 1200. In terms of the indicators though, on the daily chart, we have a small inflection up, but this still means nothing for us because we're still making lower highs on the RSI. So it looks like the trend will continue. However, one piece of good news that I do like, number one, there's a lot more volume today than yesterday. So I do like that. Like I said in the previous video, when volume is decreasing on selling, then usually the selling is exhausted and we're due for a bounce. Do we see continuation or not? We still don't have confirmation, but on the four hour chart for Tesla stock, we had bullish divergence on the RSI. Bullish divergence on the RSI means that we're making higher lows on the RSI as we make lower lows on the stock, which means there's a disconnect. We're making lower lows on the stock, but the relative strength is increasing. Why is that happening? Typically when that happens, we're due for a reversal. The low could have been that 886 today and we could possibly never see it again, but there's still no confirmation. But the, the thing I like the most right now is our, our lows on our side is becoming higher and higher. As long as that continues, if like if I could extend this line out, as long as that continues, it's extremely unlikely for us to break the low of today of 886. However, if we inflect down and we just make a new low on our side, then we could definitely dump below. 886. I just want to be showing you all the different possibilities and the reasons why behind why I think a stock is going to move a certain way. Here you can see the cup and handle formation on a bigger scale on the weekly chart. It's a lot easier to see. Huge cup, big handle, and then break to the upside going towards 1250 by January, February. However, for the coming weeks until the middle of January, it's, it's highly likely we trade between a high of about 990 and a low of 850. We trade up and down in this range and then eventually break out. That's the most likely scenario. Next up, we're taking a look at Neo stock. Neo stock has gotten beaten up because of all the negative news with China. A lot, a lot of investors have been scared out of Chinese stocks. So the market cap of Neo is 46 billion, and theoretically, their market cap should be a little bit higher or at least equal to Lucid's at 60 billion. The thing that's not good is we had a low here at about $32 per share. We tested it and broke below it here in May, but we came up and we never saw it again. We tested it one more time, December 6th, and then actually broke below it. 
That break below it isn't a good sign. However, there is a lot of support at $27 to $28 per share because of the consolidation back in October 2020. If we were to go lower, that's where we would likely bottom. In terms of the indicators, we did go really low. We got a nice bounce today. I do like how there was a lot of volume today. Again, compared to yesterday, we're seeing much more volume today as we had a 7% rebound. Still no real signs of us breaking out of the downtrend. So for now, it still looks like we're gonna have bounces and continue lower. But let's take a look at the smaller time frames to see if we're gonna start to see at least sideways action from here, trade around 30 and then move up instead of continuing the downtrend. Okay, so on the four hour chart, same idea as Tesla stock, we are seeing bullish divergence in the RSI. So what I'm seeing here, is we hit a low of the RSI on the four hour chart at 18, December 6th. We've been making higher lows ever since. It's only ever so slightly. So as an example, December 6th, we hit a low on the RSI of 18. And then here, December 15th, we hit a low on the RSI of 22. Then just a few days ago, December 17th, we hit a low on the RSI of 25. We are still trending up on the RSI. We could have a bottom in and we could be trading at least around 30 or higher in the coming weeks. But again, it's still not enough confirmation because what we want to see for true confirmation is if we're looking at the four hour chart, we really want to see the RSI break above all these and get all the way up to 70 where my mouse is. So you want the RSI to be about here to show true strength that we're going to break the downtrend. Where you really want to see that is on the daily chart. The four hour chart and the one hour chart isn't really enough. However, if you're an investor, great time to add to your position if you believe in the company long term. NVIDIA was another one that traded very low today. So hit a little 274, even though it was up pre-market at 286 and then closed the day at 290. So what you saw today, if you watched the market was all the stocks were up a lot in pre-market. Then on the open, everything dumped from really green to really red and made lower lows than yesterday which would make everyone panic and think that we're going to continue to downtrend and then the rug was pulled again for shorts and we went boom blasted up to the upside and broke out of the lows and the highs from the previous days the big boys in the market wanted to really play games with retail all my trades that i'm placed are over days and weeks so i just check now at the end of the day see where the indicators are at see where the positions are at and then see if i need to adjust anything in after hours or if I wanna adjust anything on market open the next day. This is a really good sign for NVIDIA here. Uh, in terms of candle formation, this does show bottoming. So we're coming down and we're curling. This is known as curling. And essentially means right, you're losing steam to the downside and it looks like you're gonna at least trade sideways and begin to trade upwards. So that's a good sign for NVIDIA, especially on the four hour chart here. This is looking really good. The RSI is really climbing. What would really give me a lot of confidence is if we broke 60 on the RSI, then I would really be playing call options to the upside. Just a position that I'm watching. I currently am holding a strangle with a 240 put and the 340 call expiring next week. So that means that I don't believe NVIDIA will be above 340 by the end of next week. And I don't think it's going to be below 240 by the end of next week. And because of that, I'm collecting a lot in premium. As an example, it was a really good day for my accounts. A lot of my strangles were in the red or I had some puts that I sold that were in the red. But today, put them all out of the red and massively in the green. So the total daily increase on the account was 64,000. But in the previous days, I was dropping 40,000 a day or, or 20,000 a day. So this was a long overdue bounce. Let it be, ride it out because they didn't drop below my strikes on the puts. So you just wait it out when that happens. And when you get a bounce, a lot of that premium gets eaten up. Taking a look at a firm on the four hour chart. Again, looks like we got a nice bounce and we're going up, but still no true confirmation because we've been doing this in the past. If you just look back on the four hour chart for a firm, don't get excited because you drop lower and then you come up and you make a lower high. You drop lower, you come up on a bounce and make a lower high. Drop lower, come up on a bounce, make a lower high, drop lower. And that's just we saw what we saw today. So we dropped lower yesterday and then we even today, we dropped low to $95 per share and then traded as, as high as 104. So we dropped lower, came up for a bounce, but we didn't break the previous highs. So we're just stair stepping down. And that's what you're seeing on basically all these stocks I'm showing you. If you look at the four hour charts, we're just still trending down. So we can't get too excited yet. The same with Roblox here, we're below all the averages on the four hour. So we're still making lower highs. However, the, the RSI is looking better on Roblox. It does look like we are around bottoming. Rivian, we got a nice bounce today and we may have bottomed around that $90 level. I wouldn't get too excited. You know, we could come up and test to $100 and then trade back down and kind of trade range bound between 90 and 100. Lucid was completely flat. So we went as low as $36 and as high as 39 and then closed at 38. So we're just trading sideways. And that was a little more what I expected. I expected us just 
for the coming weeks to trade between 40 and 35. I just think that uh, this week will be a lot of chop. Same idea on Blink, we went up 4.8%. The RSI is continuing to go lower. This is a decent sign of some bottoming, but you could have said the same thing last time, December 6th, where we dumped and then we had some green. I could have said right there, you know, it looks like we're bottoming and then what do you know? You just got dumped, rug pull all the way back down. The lower we go and the lower we get pulled on these indicators, the more we're due for a bounce, at least after this dump on Blink, the probability increases that we have bottomed and we could start to turn and head back up. Last stock we're going to take a look at here is on Square. And I think Square and PayPal, the world, those in the financial sector, I think they have bottomed. They've been so oversold for not huge reasons. So Square and PayPal, I think they have bottomed. I have more confidence in them bottoming than a lot of the EV and the, the tech stocks. And I think that they will start to continue higher. Honestly, in my opinion, great time to buy leaps on Square or PayPal. A leap is when you buy a call option that has a one year expiration or greater. Not financial advice. I'm personally not, not doing that. But if you believe in the company, then I actually would pick up some leaps. In terms of indicators, again, it doesn't show that we're really bottoming on the daily chart. We're really below all the, the 50 EMA, 100 EMA. Anytime we trade really far from EMAs, eventually get snapped back to it. So in the coming weeks, I think it's highly likely that we do actually come up and test $200 per share. A good bounce back up and continuation, 20 points, 30 points upwards towards 200, which is just below the 50 EMA at 210. However, on terms of indicators, it still looks like we're not out of this yet. There's no true strength. It's going to take more time. In terms of the four hour chart on Square, at least we have the RSI breaking the previous high here back in December 8th. That gives me a lot of confidence that we could see continuation because we've broken the trend on the four hour chart, just not yet on the daily chart. So whenever you're doing technical analysis of companies, it depends on your time frame. So when I'm in trades, I'm in trades for days or weeks or months. I look at the daily chart the most and I look at the weekly chart sometimes to see what the overall trend is likely going to be. But I usually use a daily chart and then I'll use the four hour chart. Sometimes I use the one hour chart, but you can't rely on it very well if you're looking to be in something for days and weeks. You really want to rely mostly on the daily, the four hour and the weekly. So on the four hour, it looks like we are bottoming and we're going to have a rotation up. On the daily chart, it looks like we, on the R side, we've turned to head up, but we need more days to break the trend here of making lower highs. So on, on the daily chart, we want this RSI to break these previous highs of 32, 33 to be confident that we've at least bottomed. So just to recap, basically all the stocks we analyzed, it, they're all continuing to make lower highs. This was a nice bounce today. It was really overdue because of how much selling we've had on all the stocks, but there's no sign yet that we've broken the downtrend of all of these companies. So we could continue to make lower highs and lower lows as we go on. We have to, we just need more time in confirmation to actually break out of the lows and make and break out of the lower highs from the previous days and previous weeks to really be confident that we're out of this and we're going to start trending back up to new highs. Give the video a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see more breakdowns and analysis like this. And let me know in the comments below what stocks you want to take a look at. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support and I'll see you in the next video.